Hi everyone, how are you? Today we're gonna be talking about preparing for breastfeeding. We get a lot of questions for moms that are getting ready to start the breastfeeding journey. So we're gonna be talking about how to prepare for breastfeeding, but we're also gonna be talking about uh, some general questions that we get all the time. We're gonna be joined by Amy Fields from AC Breastfed Babies. She is an amazing lactation consultant and she's gonna be answering all the questions you might have regardless to either preparing for breastfeeding or if you are already breastfeeding and you're experiencing any difficulties. I know there's questions about milk supply and many other questions. This is your live to ask all of those questions. She helps um, here in Arizona, hundreds of moms every year to have a successful breastfeeding journey. So she is gonna give you so much information and I'm so excited. Hi, Amy, how are you? Hi, Hi. it's been a so while. Long. I know, I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm excited too. I think we're gonna be covering a good bunch of important points. Um, I was telling everybody that we're going to be talking a little bit about preparing for breastfeeding in case somebody is in that stage, but also we want to open it up to have conversations. If anybody is currently breastfeeding and is experiencing any difficulties, like please put your questions on the question box or on the comments here, and we'll make it as valuable as possible, as fluid as possible, answering all of your questions. But Amy, let's get started. So I know that one of the things that uh, we've always talked about is like setting yourself up for success when it comes to breastfeeding. So if somebody is here live right now or is gonna watch the recording later and is on this stage of preparing for breastfeeding, like what are some of like the three or four most important things that you would ask them to consider for them to have a successful breastfeeding journey? I have said for a while, even going back to like my own breastfeeding journey, is to find those people within your circle that breastfed or that is going to be encouraging towards breastfeeding. And you may only be able to find like one person and then that can be your breastie. So someone that's going to be real but be encouraging. Just because something's hard doesn't mean it's bad. I agree. You, you know, it can be really hard in the beginning. And having that one person in your circle that you can reach out to and get encouragement, I think is key. And then it's different from when I had my kids because they're in their 20s now. But now we've got so many resources that are mm -hmm. to access. So everything from like I do a free postpartum support group every week we actually have it in three locations here in the valley and I love it when a mom comes when she's still pregnant because yes when she just gets to sit and be around the other new moms and just see what that's like I think that that's really good and then of course a breastfeeding class so joining a support group, trying to like take time before you have the baby to do a breastfeeding class because once the baby's born, you're probably not going to have time to take the class. Do it before. Yes. And then connect with an IPLC. Your insurance is probably going to pay for it. And we are working really hard to become in network with as many insurance companies as we can. Not easy, but... Um, we're in network with a lot of insurance companies and if we can start even with a one-on-one -on -one prenatal with someone to go over specific concerns or questions, maybe it's their first baby and they just really want to be as prepared as possible, or maybe they've had a child before and breastfeeding was really difficult and want to try to avoid as many struggles as possible. I call that new newborn especially the first couple of weeks, like a baby, it's a lot, a lot. Like a how lot. a little tiny brand new baby can be that much work is kind of mind boggling, but, um, you know, it's a lot because it's a new person that you're bringing into your life and there's no instruction manual. So I think expectations are huge when you know that there's going to be an initiation period. And you know that it's going to be somewhat hard. 
and beautiful, right? We all look back to when our babies were that little and we're like, oh, if we could just snuggle them again. It's, it's such a beautiful period, but it's really hard. It's really, really hard. I so, agree. yeah, it, it, I posted something the other day, like, it's 2023. There is no reason you're going into birth or breastfeeding without some sort of separation. You would never do that if you were buying a house, if you were buying a car. Like, we research stuff on Amazon when we're going to buy something from the reviews. 100%. So, and just because you do all of those things doesn't mean there's not going to be struggles, right? Like, stuff can come up, but hopefully because you have a plan and maybe a connection with an IV skill, it, it, it's not as overwhelming. I completely agree. And I think something where a lot of like your energy goes as a new mom is to kind of like wonder, research, like try to problem solve. Like there's constant, at least for me, there was a lot of constant stress and worry that if you could like prepare yourself before with like a consultation with an IBCLC, watching a class, like understanding like what to expect, what you were talking about expectations, because really lower that stress and could really like help you even like problem solve and say like, okay, like I read that this could happen. I remember that these are the things that I could do. Or I remember, I feel like just setting your expectations on the right place is huge. So we've already talked about joining a Facebook group. We've already talked about talking to an IVCLC and uh, potentially taking an online class because now it's so easy. There's so many available. You guys have one. Uh, there's no excuse. But what else, Amy, could you do? Like, I know that we've talked about this before, about how frustrating it is sometimes. Like, there's so much information and so many, like, these are the steps and the guides, like, when you're pregnant of, like, what you need to be doing, what you need to be eating. But what are some of the things, like, postpartum or, like, during the breastfeeding period, you would think, you would encourage moms to kind of, like, prepare for, like, when it comes to, for example, like, nutrition, self-care, anything like that that could help them have a better breastfeeding experience so if we think of those first few weeks as like a boot camp we know <laughs> it's going to be interrupted you know? so it's going to be having that expectation that you know we're going to try to get rest during the day yeah. and yeah even if you're just laying down if you like no pressure to fall asleep but you're just gonna lay down because the act of laying down gets our cortisol levels to decrease a little bit it gets our fight or flight like that nervous system to relax so you're you know you've got this like pot that is being taken from a lot because you just gave birth however you gave birth whether it was a vaginal birth or a cesarean birth and you know the lack of sleep and all the hormone adjustment and so anything we can like try to put back in there by resting um with all of the moms that we work with we do a prenatal appointment we always talk about like some type of meal plan 100 percent. and we talk about the importance of snacks so we want moms to eat their three meals a day and mm -hmm. it could be that you actually do like meal planning. Maybe you have, have you seen those nesting, like nesting parties that people will have instead of a baby party? And they have their friends come over and they meal prep and put freezer meals for the mom. Yes. Amazing. But if it just means that you're gonna go to Sprouts or Costco or somewhere like that, and you're just gonna buy a bunch of you know, healthy freezer meals to put into the freezer, that's okay too. But you're getting yes. prepared for that. And then snacks are so important because we don't want our blood sugar to be like going up and then down. And protein is really important, especially always, but especially during the postpartum period. So can we have snacks that are like protein based? So if you're really craving some chips, maybe you'll have like a string cheese with it, or you'll have like crackers with peanut butter or some type of beef sticks. Um, and then of course, like the matcha protein powder is amazing because it's everything all in one. And nutrient deficiency is 
definitely being talked about that. I, I see that a lot right now. And I love more been talking about it for a long time. I and mean, it's, it's the whole foundation of why you started Majka. Yes. But, but man, it is, it's real. And a lot of these moms are brain deficient that a lot of what's going on, like, you know, the fatigue, the stress, all of that stuff can be linked to nutrient deficiencies for sure. And like really important to say as well too, it's not about just eating enough, it's also what you're eating. And I feel like it goes back to like what you're saying before about planning and you're not buying a house or a car without doing your research. It's kind of like the same here of not just like meal prepping or meal planning, but understanding like what are some of the things that are gonna help support your body better during this stage. And actually, I wanted to bring up one question that I just saw come through the question box. Let me see if I understand it correctly, but it says, what are high fats and protein nutrients prepared for yourself breastfeeding? I think she's trying to ask like, maybe like why fats and protein are important like during breastfeeding and maybe some ideas of it. I think it's like written a little bit weird. Yeah, I think it's always important. I think that I think that good quality fat and a like good amount of protein with every meal and every snack is always important, but it becomes even more so during the postpartum period because it's a time of stress, however you look. At yes. It. Um so I'm not a nutritionist. So to get into like the specifics of how much fat, how much protein, like really not my area of expertise when i have someone that we're really trying to fine tune like nutrients and things like that a lot of times i will refer out and i know you've had allegra of aloha yes she's so she's good so, so good and that's who we prefer our moms to when we're really trying to fine tune um maybe there's food sensitivities with the baby or, you know, maybe mom is just really struggling, wants to know more. So that's my go-to person. For I love her too. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And I wanted to, so from the people that are here, from the moms that are here, if you guys are experiencing, like, or have any questions, whether you're preparing to breastfeed or you're actually breastfeeding right now and you have any questions or are experiencing any problems, please make sure to ask your questions because Amy... I feel like no at all. Like she has so much, much experience in this. But Amy, I also wanted to ask you, kind of that cause like stress with breastfeeding is the time it takes. I feel like it's a huge commitment. Like a lot of us moms, like of course, want to do it for as long as possible. There's undeniable evidence that it's kind of like the best for it. It's great for the babies. What the best you can do. But sometimes one of the biggest roadblocks is how time consuming it is. Like a lot of us might have more kids, might have a job, might have like just life, you know? And breastfeeding is time consuming, like, or it can be time consuming. And if you include pumping, it's even a little bit more time consuming. So what are some of like your tips to make sure like, or to make breastfeeding a little bit, I don't wanna say less time consuming, but to incorporate it into your life a little bit more seamlessly, because for me, I felt like I always had to kind of like pause what I was doing in order to either breastfeed or pump. Like it was just really hard to incorporate it into my day. And that was one of my biggest struggles to continue to breastfeed was just time. So if you have any tips on that, I think that would be great. Yes. So, so part of like the expectations too. Mm -hmm. And I... I will often tell a mom that I'm working with, like, let's just be in the moment. Like, let's just talk about like today and not get too far ahead because that can be really overwhelming. So in that first month or so, I feel like mother nature designed it in a very wise way because we're really not, I know real life happens. Like, like for you, you're a business owner. So that didn't stop when you had a baby like your business yes. was still um like for me i i worked as a nurse when i was having my kids and i did have like you know six to eight weeks off so hopefully people have a some time but in that especially that first month i think mother nature designed it 
in a way where we're really not supposed to be a whole lot of anything else. Like we're really supposed to have people around that can help us. That's not the reality for a lot of people. Partners may be going back to their work early on. There might have a family that can come and help. So I totally acknowledge that. But as much as you can in the first like three to four weeks, know that that is the phase when breastfeeding is well established. Yes. I, the analogy of it's like driving a car. When you first learn how to drive, you're kind of white knuckling in it. And you don't really want anyone to see you. You're not playing the radio. You're just focusing on driving and try to remember yes. everything someone has told you about being a safe driver. And then the more that we do it, we just get in like and get in and drive and we eat a burger and we're throwing snacks back to our kids or sing into the yes. video and so breastfeeding should eventually get to be like that so then it should just be able to like fit into the day and i remember because my kids were all two years apart like i mean there were a lot of times when i'm just sitting on the floor nursing the baby while the child was emptying out a toy in her toy box and like, okay, well, at least she's entertained. Um, there's seasons of life where I feel like we definitely need to give ourselves a free pass of maybe having our older children watch a little more screen time than what we would normally yeah. do. Um, with pumping, now at least there's wearable pumps. I know they can be kind of finicky, but, um, and, it's, and it's okay. Like if someone wants to breastfeed for six days six weeks or six months or three years that is that is totally up to them and sometimes we don't make that decision until we're in the moment yes so it's okay to not have a lot of goals of breastfeeding for 12 months or years or but my hope is that we get through these different stages in a way that the mom feels like the decisions that are best for her and for her lifestyle but yeah, I don't believe it's a big commitment. And you know, there's certain, I remember, I remember with my oldest when she was first born thinking, this is really hard. And no wonder people don't breastfeed. Like this is, I thought this was the most of my life easier. And then about six weeks into it, I was like, oh, this is, this is why. This is what it was meant to be. Okay, like <laughs> it makes sense. for me. It, you know, it took about that long for me to realize like, oh, now it's easier. I don't have to worry about warming up bottles or washing bottles or packing food. Like for me, it then became easier. Yeah. So I, I, I hope that everybody gets to that point, but I know that it can be really hard for a, a much longer time for some people. So I, man, I yeah, if all the moms we work with right like we just know that there can be unique challenges i completely agree and here uh one of our moms here is saying godin is 144 she said hi i had complications after giving uh birth trauma i have been having a hard time breastfeeding and eating what can i do i'm struggling with my health and i think like she's not alone like there's a lot of moms that are on the same boat like we're like we're so tired, like we can't fully recover from birth, but yet we're going through this breastfeeding journey, which is also exhausting and depleting. So like, Amy, I would love to hear what you have to say, but I feel like at this point, like, even if like, if you're struggling with time and breastfeeding and eating, you need to, even though it sounds counterintuitive, but you need to prioritize yourself. Like you need to make sure that you as a mom are good for you to be able to continue to provide the best care for the baby. So sometimes I feel like as moms, we think that even though we're exhausted, we're tired, we need to shift all of our energy to take care of others. But I think that it starts like specifically here for Godinez 144, like it starts with you. Yeah. Like you need to shift that. Getting back to the basics. So I would say like focusing on nutrition is really important. And if you, without even like working with anyone or having blood test done, anything like, um, you know, just making sure that you're eating a nutritious, well-rounded diet. Um, yes. 
Um, I, even if, even if it's not the matcha powder, like I often tell mm. moms, like, can you add a protein powder into like that early Quick. afternoon? Because sometimes that slump that we hit is because so many moms I work with are calorie deficient and nutrient deficient. So often it's we need to eat more food. 100%. And that's important. So back to the basics of nutrition and then um, getting outside, even if it's just for a 20 minute walk, moving your body some way, getting some sunlight and then looking at what we can do with sleep. So maybe get with your partner and just say this week, I need to just do a reset. I really am struggling and I'm going to really focus on my nutrition, getting outdoors and moving my body and sleep. So if that means that you do like a tag team at night where your partner gets in for part of the night, like if you can get a four hour stretch of sleep at night, I feel like that's a game changer. Yeah, you start thinking oh. clearly again. You're like, oh, this is how, this is who I am. Like, this is my, yes. this is my normal Can self. You no, and, 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 and you, you touched on something super important, which is like making sure that you're able to voice your needs. I don't know why sometimes too, when we're like in the middle of it, we think that we need to take care of everything, right? Like, because we have the baby, we're meant to take care of everything. Like we're meant to be able to endure everything and all of these things. And we're not great at voicing our needs. Like sometimes like even our partner, like our husband, whatever, like they just need to hear that we are struggling in order to be able to help. Because sometimes like we're also really good at pretending that we have everything under control, even though inside, like we're like dying and we need help. But it starts with voicing your needs and asking for help. And I think that's really, 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 really important. And we don't do yeah. that very often. Yes, I mean, asking for help so very important and it could be even like a, a family or friends or something like that but postpartum doula like look in, into that because postpartum doulas can be fairly affordable often they have like different packages maybe it's something that you could ask for for baby shower again for baby shower yes um you know especially if your family can't into town and stay with you if they live out of town like just know that, that there are resources out there and you have to get a little bit creative with it but it's so worth it i completely agree and amy there's a question here from cheyenne seven and she wants to know your opinion on correcting tongue and lip ties she says she's conflicted on what to do with her daughter so she wants to know if you have an opinion on it Yes, I think that it's individual, like it, it definitely requires an assessment, of both mm -hmm. structure, so like appearance, what it looks like and function, what are the symptoms. So there's not a one size fits all like, oh my gosh, everybody that has a possible tongue tie or lip tie, we need to run to a release. Um, so so if it's not affecting function you wouldn't like if it's about function and structure like oh does that yeah. make sense or no i'm like i'm just trying no. to use my logic <laughs> but the but how it affect function can differ from one mom to another one mom may have pain and um baby may have low weight gain another mom baby may have like a lot of weight gain like really good weight gain and mm -hmm. Um, but baby is super gassy because they're just yeah. chugging the milk that's flowing and they don't really have like a good seal and a good latch. So those are the things that like I always go over with my clients that I'm working with. So hopefully you have a good IBCLC on board. We do work with people virtually. Um, we can actually do assessments virtually. We, we were, Oh yeah, we were doing them before COVID, but during COVID we got really good at it because there were you have many to. IVCLCs that were in person, which is understandable um, at certain periods. And so I was still seeing people in person and I was doing a lot of virtual visits. So now I have and I'll just tell you 
tell you a little bit about how we do that is we actually send the parents instructions on how to do an oral exam and record it. And we have them do that and record it and send it to us before the visit. So ah. look at the video, we can slow it down. We can like make zoom. screenshots, zoom in. And then that's the appearance part of it. That's the structure. And then we go over function. That is so cool. Okay, so it's an basically it's on a case by case basis, making sure that you're working with an IVCLC to get an accurate assessment, and so you can truly understand if it's actually affecting in any way, and if then if there's anything that's affecting, make a decision together if you need to release it or not. Yes. Um, Amy, I have another question here that just came up, and then I think we're running out of time. But I just saw a question here from somebody. This must be a tired mom, like a lot of us. And it's like, she wants to know a little bit about like caffeine and breastfeeding. She says, can I have caffeine while I am breastfeeding? Like through your experience, like uh, through all of these years of being an IVCLC, like, you know, that sleep is hard. Sometimes we still need to function to either work, take care of like the house, the other kids, like a lot of things. So if you're used to like your coffee, what is kind of like your take on continuing to drink a little bit of coffee while you're breastfeeding? Yes. So the short answer is yes. Most women can drink caffeine when they're breastfeeding. The guidelines are similar to what we tell women during pregnancy, and it's about 200 grams of caffeine a day. Um, if someone has cut caffeine out completely during pregnancy, I will often tell them to wait about four weeks before they start to slowly add it back in. And we know caffeine could be coffee, tea, chocolate, like it could be sources. So keep that in mind when you're considering like what the amount is. Um, and then that way, um, I don't want people to use caffeine to push through, mm -hmm. especially in the first four weeks. If they're tired, they should be laying down, right? And if they, cut out caffeine during pregnancy and they start it back at postpartum and then maybe the baby's fussy maybe their baby is one that does react to caffeine the caffeine how we might not know if that's what it is in those first few weeks like I better get to know your baby about four weeks with them what their normal is then as you slowly start to add caffeine in again you should be able to notice if there's struggles with it and I will Perfect. tell you, an apple, eating an apple will give you more energy than a coffee. Amy, that's actually what somebody just asked right now. She's like, what other things can you consume to get energy? Because I don't drink coffee. So you just said an apple. Like, I know we've also mentioned um, protein. protein. Like, protein is really, really good. Like, protein also helps with, like, I feel like we've all been there when you're, like, breastfeeding and you feel like you can eat your refrigerator, like, your complete refrigerator, and it causes, like, that, but that also helps with that, but it helps with a little bit more stable energy. The apple that you mentioned right now, also, this is just my two cents, but you probably have more, but sometimes even just water, like, water with electrolytes, like, a lot of times we're just dehydrated, like, breastfeeding or not, sometimes, like, you're just tired, but it's because you're dehydrated, so maybe instead of going first for the coffee, starting your morning with like a big glass of water with electrolytes, that could in itself make a huge difference. But I don't know what else, what other things you yeah. have in mind, Amy. No, definitely protein for sure. More sustained energy. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, your protein powder is packed full of a lot of those nutrients and yeah worth a try like it's it's worth a try right like you can only try these things and every day you may be able to check off the box but i mean i have both of my cups here one has water in it with electrolyte i'm not postpartum and i still need to need very like i'm at the other end of the spectrum now like i'm in the perimenopausal state so it's coming coming back to me like that I have to take care of myself I have to prioritize my sleep I need to prioritize my nutrition I need to stay hydrated and move my body it doesn't change it doesn't go away yeah there's just certain phases in our life where it becomes more important I completely agree
Okay, and Amy, do you have time for one more question? Yes. So this is, is always like uh, a very consistent one with our moms. And I know like you and I have talked about it many, many times. But let's talk a little bit about milk supply, like whether like Godin is here that is struggling with breastfeeding because you're really stressed and then there's the added stress of being able to produce enough milk. Like what are some of the things that you need to look for to really understand that you actually even have low milk supply or if you're just perceiving that you have low milk supply because you're comparing your supply to maybe a photo of a refrigerator full of milk. But in order to help a little bit with that stress, like when would you consider somebody as really having a low milk supply? Because also to add, I also think it's relative because like for me specifically, like I really needed, of course, to get enough for baby, but I needed to have set aside because I was separated from baby like at work time. So I needed to pump extra and I couldn't make it. So I think it's also relative to the situation. But what are some of like the things that you consider with your mom so we can bring a little bit of peace of mind when it's there's truly an issue of low milk supply? Yes, yeah, so it's okay to be just uh, a just enougher. It's totally okay to not have milk in your freezer. I know that when you're, you're going to be separated from baby and you're going to work, you, you do need enough for that time that you're separated. And then when you're separated, hopefully you can pump so that you can mm -hmm. finish that stock for when you're going to be away again. But breast milk production is supply and demand for most women. Muy importante. <laughs> muy, muy importante. <laughs> supply and demand. So it's especially in those first few weeks, you're building the foundation of the road. So that's why, you know, have a prenatal visit so that you know the biology of production so that you can get the prolactin receptors in your breast, the hormone prolactin receptor open and ready to go for your entire breastfeeding journey. So it's supply and demand. And then of course, those foundational things again of like hydration and, and reducing stress by getting some sleep. It may be broken up, but, um, and, you know, doing something like sitting outside in the sunlight for a little bit or sitting in front of a window to let the sunlight and then as you're healing you get to that point where you can move your body some um that really helps you to be able to do what you need to do which is make milk now there are some people that do all of those things we have low milk supply and then we have moms that have milk supply yes and, and it's not anything that they like did a ton of extra pumping or their body makes a lot of milk. So if you're one of the people that are like, Amy, I have done, I did all that stuff, but I'm still like a little bit on the low side. Um, make sure you're working with an IBCLC because we often will refer to someone to have like thyroid checked, your prolactin hormone levels checked, see if there's anything that we can optimize to help support you make a full milk supply. So yeah. I love it. Perfect. Oh, Amy, we already took extra five minutes of your time, but thank you so much as always. If anybody wanted to get in touch with you, what's the easiest way? Like a DM, an email? Um, I know you're really busy, but what's the best way for somebody that still has a question or wants to have like a consultation, maybe for like tongue tie or like flange sizing, like a bunch of the things that you guys do. What is the easiest way to get in touch with you and your team? If you go to our Instagram at AZ mm -hmm. Babies, um, there's a link in the bio. And if you click on it, it'll tell you request a consult and you can click on that us your struggles, what's going on, your insurance information, all of that. So we have everything from the 15 minute flange size fittings that we can do virtually to a 30 minute question and answer to full consult. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Amy. I hope you have a great day. Thank you everybody that was live and that will watch the recording. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And thank you so much, Amy. You have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.